With Russo now out of the picture for almost two months, Ed Ferrara who previously was the head writer of Thunder was now almost officially being given the head writer role for Nitro with him writing the TV scripts with influence from Terry Taylor before going over them with the rest of the committee. As Ferrara playing off the Oklahoma-Nebraska college football rivalry brought the character back on the night to major heat from the crowd, setting up Seed laying him out to a big reaction before being arrested by Mike Sanders to start the show long angle with Scott Steiner arriving to the building demanding to face Seed tonight or he's gonna take out Flair. With talks of Eric Bischoff getting control back escalating during the week, things went to the next level with reports from the company signaling on the Bischoff-headed group being close to finalize a deal to buy WCW from Time Warner in the next few weeks, with an official announcement could come as soon as the first week of 2001 after McMahon's WWF pulled away from negotiations and Brad Siegel looking to sail the company before the upcoming AOL merger set to be official in the next few weeks. Starting speculation on Eric's plans and vision for the relaunch of WCW including the potential return of top names like Hogan Hall and Savage in the near future. With the Luger vs Goldberg Grey match set for the Starcade pay-per-view, Luger came out for a promo to close the first hour bringing out Goldberg's new book to read a chapter on Goldberg's power plant wrestling trainer Buddy Lee Parker sitting in the front row, building him up as the man behind Goldberg with him reading a quote from Goldberg putting him over big saying that he would not be where he is if not for Parker, before Luger turned it personal saying that Goldberg left to become a top star while abandoning Parker who still works 15 hours a day in the power plant to close the first unopposed hour with a 2.9 rating. After again mentioning Scott Hall last week despite management orders including taking things to another level by calling out the company to bring him back, things reportedly got stricter during the week with a direct order not to mention Hall's name again on TV under any circumstance, as with Nash and Page naming themselves the insiders to build Hall's return along with months of Nash referencing him in promos. Hall was one of the most overperformers in the business without even showing up with the crowd again loudly chanting for him throughout the Nash and Page vs 3 count match, as with him this time not mentioning the name, Nash went around it by openly acknowledging and encouraging the chant, as Nash and Page boosted by the intrigue of Hall's potential return again opened the first opposed quarter stronger than usual with a 2.4 rating for the tag match and post match promo with the thrillers and flair. With raw ratings in the past month steadying at the 5 rating range combined with the traditional January boost and the road to WrestleMania coming up, Vince McMahon was set to make his TV return tonight in a hyped state of WWF address to boost things up heading into 2001, with Raw opening with Undertaker vs Rikishi going 5 minutes to end in a surprise finish with Rikishi going over clean. With Raw's first quarter despite the big star power match opening at one of the lowest openings of the year for rating. WCW set up another match for the Starcade pay-per-view with Mike Awesome being attacked by Bam Bam Bigelow in the parking lot when arriving to the building, followed by Ric Flair warning the security crew on Scott Steiner about to go crazy if he doesn't get seat out of jail in time for the main event, and Bill Goldberg in what became his usual time slot for over a month with him again working a match between 9.15 to 9.30 going over smooth in less than a minute.
after one of the lowest quarters of the year in the first 15 minutes, Roar rebounded over a million viewers in the second quarter jumping from a 4 to a 4.8 rating, featuring a Hardys vs right to censor tag titles match going 4 minutes with the Dudleys coming out in RTC gear to tease a heel turn of them joining the group followed by Deborah waiting for Foley's arrival with him stuck in the New York traffic after a book signing and Triple H and Rikishi planning the strategy of them joining forces on Sunday to make sure one of them comes out with the title. With the shows starting with only a 1.6 rating gap in the first quarter just 30 minutes ago, both programs went in the opposite direction from there with Raw almost tripling Nitro in the next 15 minutes, as with Nitro having Jarrett vs Conan going 3 minutes while taking two commercial breaks in the quarter to drop to a show low 1.9 rating. Raw had Chris Benoit vs Hardcore Holly followed by Vince McMahon arriving to the building and perhaps the most talked about segment of the night with Rock cutting an all-time memorable promo backstage to hype the six-man Hell in a Cell match on Sunday, running down his five opponents to a massive reaction from the crowd in the building for over four minutes, with the quarter featuring Rock's promo along with Vince's arrival and the Benoit Holly match sore all peaking head-to-head -head with a 5.2 rating, its highest rated opposed quarter in the month. Scott Steiner opened Nitro's final quarter with the last warning to Flair to bring him seed by the end of the match, with WCW taking its final commercial break way earlier than usual to end the broadcast with over 16 minutes of uninterrupted commercial free block to build an audience, as Steiner in the second week of his title run continuing to show strong signs with the main event quarter jumping huge with over 1.1 million viewers. First with Steiner vs Morris going 9 minutes with Steiner going over before calling out Flair as promised throughout the show, going after him to find Harn Anderson first with him taking him out in a show closing brawl bringing out Goldberg and Luger followed by Seed returning minute from time to go off the air with a Steiner vs Seed pull apart brawl, as the final quarter which featured the Steiner Morris match with the intrigue of the hyped Steiner Flair confrontation saw it drawing a show high 2.9 rating. The highest rated opposed quarter on Nitro in almost three months, along with it being the first time an opposed segment going against Raw was the most watched quarter of the night overall since January 10. Going against the larger than usual audience watching the Nitro main event Raw dropped to a 4.6 rating in a direct turnover of over 800,000 viewers, featuring an Edge and Christian vs Quick and Road Dog tag match, and several backstage segments including Vince McMahon going into Austin's locker room to start the show long angle of him trying to stop the Hell in a Cell match from happening telling Austin that he doesn't care about him personally but he doesn't want him in the match to protect his investment, followed by Kurt Angle vs Chris Jericho for the WWF title opening the first unopposed quarter, jumping over 900,000 viewers to a 5.3 rating with them going 7 minutes to end with Angle retaining after Kane's interference.
After the usual bump for the top of the hour quarter, Raw in what became a rare situation increased further at 10.15 to the peak of the night 5.4 rating for a quarter seeing a Billy Gunn vs Val Vini's IC title match going 4 minutes, and Vince trying to convince Rock to get out of the Hell in a Cell match telling him that he's perhaps the most intelligent performer in the company and has the most to lose out of anyone with his entire career ahead of him. As with Raw on the night averaging 6.2 million viewers for the full broadcast between 9 to 11 10 pm, SmackDown which takes place in Madison Square Garden on Thursday headlined by a big star power four-way match with Rock Austin Taker and Angle, ended up drawing over 7.7 million viewers to take the viewership discrepancy from Raw to new levels as by far the most watched show of the week. After almost two hours of hype Vince McMahon came out at 10.55 p.m. for his official integration back into TV storylines for the first time since going home in late June for his promoted state of WWF address, saying that he doesn't know where to begin after being gone for over five months before starting with Linda putting Mick Foley as the WWF commissioner saying that Foley is sacrificing the careers of six of the top performers in history by putting them in the Hell in a Cell match for personal reasons to hype a brutal spectacle on Sunday, bringing out Foley for the response saying that he booked the match as his two Hell in a Cell matches represented important milestones in his career with the first one against Taker making it and the second one against Hunter ending it promising that the match will take place even at a risk of careers being ended as long as he's in charge, bringing out Austin Rock and Undertaker to answer Vince with a stunner rock bottom and last tried to cement their place in the match, closing the show with Hunter Rikishi and Angle laying out Rock Austin and Taker in a backstage beatdown in the go-home segment to the pay-per-view, as the McMahon state of WWF address which went almost 10 minutes in the overrun picked up over 700,000 viewers to a joint show high 5.4 rating, with the boost of Vince McMahon's TV return which usually guarantees a strong viewership pickup way above the average range didn't translate on the night with Raw drawing its fourth straight 5 overall rating, with hopes of coming off the strong pay-per-view hype next week on a full unopposed night with Nitro airing on Tuesday will lead to a strong boost of interest starting next Monday.